Washington football. Woo! Hello, everybody, sense to me. and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle, and I'm joined by my two co-hosts, Michael Hall and Michael Reed. The Burgundy Zone is a part of the Frederick Podcast Network. You can find out more by going to www.lessoffrederick.com. We are rejoined by new, bringing back our guy, Mr. Tyler Larson, the center for the Washington Commanders. Just re-signed his deal to come back. Congratulations, brother. I know you've been working really hard to come back, so how you been? Been good. Um, enjoying off season. Happy to be back. Can't wait to uh, see this new offense that's coming. Um, get to know all the new players and all all that stuff. Uh, yeah, OTAs are coming right around the corner. Rehab's going good on the leg, so I'm excited. Was there any quite any doubt in your mind that you now would you go anywhere else? Uh, no, I I only wanted to be here. I love playing for Ron. Um, I got my family out here. I don't. I didn't want to move them around again. It's it's been a lot. So, um, yeah, this this was a good fit. And like I said, I was I was excited uh, to see who our new OC was, and it just uh, was icing on the cake. And um, I think this is the best fit for me. Now, Tyler, I haven't even gotten to my first question, but I just wanted to elaborate on the last one. You know, you said you lo- you wanted to play for Ron. You know, obviously mm-hmm. it's well known. Jeremy Reeves obviously feels the same way. But like, just from a player's perspective, like, what it what is it about Coach Ron? Um, so Ron is a very personable guy, even as a head coach in the NFL. Uh, I have been on different teams where it's, I mean, <laughs> whether you're making a certain amount of dollar uh, amount, um, the coach won't talk to you. That's just how it is. <laughs> uh, but here, it's he he just does such a great job of making it like a family feel, making, uh, you know, he, he shows that he cares. You know that he cares. Uh, I can't tell you one time where he's walked by without saying anything to me or at least asking how my family or kids are. So um, he's just a guy that I want to ride or die for, really. Absolutely understandable. I totally and wholeheartedly understand that. My first question to you, Tyler, um, you were 6-1-1 one one in your time as a starting center last season. Uh, talk to us about that span because obviously we know we've been in contact with you. Like, it was a hard offseason being able to come back from that injury. It was a very difficult one for you to rehab through, but you worked hard. We were able to do that. Then you get your chance to start, and you were able to help the team get to that. What was that whole process like? How was that stretch? Um, I wish I wish I could just keep – rolling through it. it that honestly was the most fun i've had in football to really? be honest yeah um just me rolling with my guy uh taylor um hanging out with you know playing with andrew norwell a guy that i played with in carolina uh being able to play with charles leno i mean we were rivals all through college it was just like it was a cool how everything just was coming together it felt good we were winning um I'll never forget how nervous and like just sketched out I was that first game against uh, mm-hmm. the Bears on Thursday night football. We won, didn't score a lot of points, but it was a fun game. We got B Rob back out on the field. It was, it's just so much happened this year in that short time span. It just, I, I will never forget it. It was fun. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I mean, it was fun for the fans as well. Like that whole just like little stretch of winning. I mean, like you said, just everyone was riding for Taylor, the whole offense, the whole defense. It was just yeah. definitely a fun stretch of games. Um, but looking into this um, next upcoming season, you mentioned how they uh, just hired a new offensive coordinator in Eric Bieniemy. Just based off the reputation, I don't know if you've spoken to him or not or know him or any way. I know him a little bit, but just based off his reputation, what is it going to be like playing for a guy like that? Uh, from – Players that have played for him, they, everyone was excited that he's actually coming here because uh, he's such a – I mean, he, he kind of does the same thing as Ron does. As he, he really makes a personal connection with you. Uh, I've met him for maybe five minutes, but he seemed down-to-earth guy. I've seen some of the interviews that he's done, and uh, he, he correlates a lot of stuff with football in real life, and you can just feel he has that 
passion. Um, so I'm excited to play for him. Uh, I mean, you've seen what kind of offense Kansas City has. I know that he had a part of that. So, um, I yeah, I, I just think we got good things coming. Yeah, and I mean, just to kind of uh, elaborate on that a little bit, what is the feeling like in the locker room for this upcoming season? Because you look back at last season, you guys went on that winning streak. You guys were so close to making the playoffs. And then, uh, of course, you guys bring in EB, and it's it's huge. I mean, what what's yep. the – temperature like in um, that locker room yeah i mean i think everyone is just you know we we all feel like yeah we were right there but we're all still super hungry to get into the playoffs and you know make a run i think everybody is the energy is just shifting of everyone's super excited to get the same rolling and i mean we still got four months till we actually mm-hmm. you know start seeing things but um yeah i, I think just guys it's it's a different environment to be honest just walking in the building there's just a good energy a good i I honestly like an electric vibe just walking through the holes in in reference to like let's just say last season in a change um i no last season we i mean like you said we were hitting that winning streak everyone's like you know it was good i feel like we're we're coming in this year at that you know level of right. excitement level of you know uh getting ready to go something's building essentially you yes. feel that yeah I, there I, you I, go I totally, building, yeah i totally understand what you're saying tyler my next question for you one of the biggest you know obviously we're a big taylor heineke fans he went to atlanta we wish him the best mm-hmm. obviously sam howell came into that dallas game and most likely he is going to be competing for the number one quarterback job so i just want to ask you oh god i gotta go so yeah, what was it? <laughs> I was wondering what that yeah, was. Like, it's not is that my time. headphones? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. What was? How do you think Sam Howe did? And what do you think the kind of general feeling is with Sam Howe yeah. going forward? Uh, I mean, just what Sam has th- shown throughout last season, not just in that Dallas game. I think there's a reason why all the coaches have so much faith in this kid right. and giving him a off, like giving him a chance to actually show what he could do. Um, I'm just excited because he he's a quiet kid, quiet. I mean, not a kid, but I'm much older. But you know, he's he's <laughs> quiet, keeps his head down. He just was grinding all season. wasn't really you know he, he was a good rookie. How people say rookies are seen but not heard. Um, and you could tell he was just taking everything in each week, um, and he just has that confidence when he was giving looks for the defense and all that, and then. Obviously, everyone saw what he brought that Dallas game. And um, honestly, I don't think any player was surprised by what he brought. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, definitely, like, a lot of fans like what they saw in that Dallas game, and they're definitely looking forward to see what he's going to do coming out to the start of, like, training camp and OTAs and whatnot. <clears throat> but um, another addition that was made this offseason was bringing back big Deron Payne and – Obviously, you play the offensive line. He's defensive line, so you probably go against him in practice. But mm-hmm. just what is he like in the locker room? Because he's not a guy that's, like, really, like, talks to the media a lot. You only see, like, certain interviews here and there. He seems yeah. like a quiet, kind of, like, shy, but, like, kind of outgoing as well kind of guy. Like, what is he just like, not only on the field, but off the field as well? Yeah, on the field, man, he's a handful. Practices aren't fun. Uh, and then, <laughs> I mean, having John on the other side. Uh, it, it's just ridiculous that you line. Um, but as a person, I mean, he's, he seems like a good down to earth guy. I don't get it much, you know, interaction with him just because we're always busy meeting with the offense, stuff like that. But, um, he's a good guy to have on the team and, you know, he's obviously earned what he's gotten and I'm excited for him. Yeah. Kyle, you want to go ahead with your other one? Cause I finished off your question for you. I think you did a good job with that. If you want to go again. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So just speaking about that, what does going up against people like Chase, you talked about Deron Payne, but like you look at Chase Young, you look at Cam Curl, you look at Montez Sweat, what does that kind of do for you? And what do these guys kind of bring to this defense and practice every day? Is it like high energy all the time? Or are they always just trying oh, to yeah. get after it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just nonstop. You just hear them going. Uh, people during training camp coming to the, you know, practices and stuff, they'll hear every single one of those D linemen, some of the DBs and stuff, just talking. Um, and it's good. It brings energy, brings the intensity up throughout practice. And, you know, it just brings that um, competition level that we need to 
improve through training camp, which is the whole point of it. Right. Um, at that same point, it's really important to have that high level of players because, I mean, that's how we get yeah. better because we're going against them every single day. So um, I think that keeping that group and keeping them here this again this year, I think it's going to be huge for the offensive line, for, you know, just everybody. It's it's good to have that competition level to just improve everybody around. Right. And yeah, that helped you. My apologies I mean, for that. Uh, my dog started fighting. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so I can hear my wife screaming for me, and one of my worst fears is that, like, you know, Cash is involved. So I yeah. just run up there, and it's my two big dogs. <clears throat> well, Kyle, that's because, remember, you run you ran a dog fighting ring. Though. Remember that? <laughs> the, yeah. So you got to stop doing that. You got to stop doing that. Tyler, to wrap this up, I only have a couple more questions for you. But um, last season, who was the toughest matchup for you? Um, everyone has their different, you know, thing they bring. I will say Dexter Lawrence. Uh, wow, he is just a tank. He brings <laughs> it every single play. He's talking after every play. It's just it's <laughs> constant, constant, constant. And exhausted to be honest, but that, I mean, it was a fun game. I got hurt that game, but that honestly yeah, was fun. probably one of the top games of that year. Um, I will say, uh, Buckner on the Colts probably my strengths don't match up against his. It was a little bit harder because he's a longer player, mm. uh, he has an arm length, and uh, at times in pass rushes, he you know, he's good. He's a good player, so I would, I would definitely say Buckner is probably hardest for me. Yeah, yeah totally understandable, dude. Lawrence showed out this year, man. He, he dominated cool. games. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. Tyler, my next question for you. The wide receiver room, obviously we all love Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel. But I'm not going to say surprised, but did they? Sur did the wide receiver room surpass your expectations? Um, I don't. I don't think they surpassed. I think – you know, we see everything every single day, practicing and stuff like that. But I think um, the fact that they were to stay, they were able to stay healthy for the most of the season. We were able to see really what that room has, which was really cool to see. And um, it just shows how explosive this offense can be with the weapons that we have. I got you. Last one. Best movie and video game of all time. Ooh, um, best movie. That's tough. Um, best video game though, probably GTA, either San Andreas or uh, Five. <laughs> well, I'll throw it out there. Um, the right age group for that. Also, <laughs> Rainbow Six Siege. That that's probably those. Yeah, yeah. those two. I I can't. Does John it. Allen love uh, Tom Clancy games? Does he? I, I don't know. I I'm I haven't sure been playing. Okay, I haven't played in gosh, maybe two years. It, I don't have time anymore because the family's out here. <laughs> <laughs> the first season here, I, I was by myself, so I got a lot of time. But as for movies, man, I I love uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, I think that is yeah. probably one of the top movies for me. Really. Um, I'm surprised so to hear you say that. I, I'm going to have to Love check it out movie. again. Yeah. It's yeah. A badass movie. Every season when we're traveling, I'll probably watch that six out of the eight games when we're traveling. No way. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I just love it. It gives me jacked. I don't know. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get it, dude. Tyler, I can't thank you enough for joining us, brother, as always. Giving us your, like, basically what's going on with you and everything that's going on. I really do appreciate that hindsight. Um, I really hope that your rehab continues to go well and that you're able to compete for that starting job. You know, I told you before, I think you're more than capable of doing it. You proved it last oh, yeah. season. I hope you last keep working hard, brother. Last two years you've played, man. You've yep. came in and done a fantastic job. I appreciate job. it. So yes, we all feel confident with you in there. Thank you. Keep working hard, Tyler. Have a good one, brother. Tell the family. All right, I appreciate it, man. All right, I will. See ya. Thanks, Tyler. See ya. Yep. All right, everybody. We just spoke with a man, Mr. Tyler Larson. What a good story, man. Yeah, my apologies about the last about the dogs i'm sorry if my wife just texted me she's like i hope it didn't miss scrub your interview because like as soon as i got them separate i was like we're in the middle of the interview babe like <laughs> but it's not her fault it's just um like because no. we have three dogs it's two your of them, fault you raised 
dog fighting dogs, Kyle. <laughs> well, two of them are like, it's boy and a girl, and they're like, they go back to when they were puppies. Yeah. Like, they've been with each other their entire lives. And they, for some reason, recently, they've been getting into it. And it's really I thought it was my headphones. Man. I thought it was my headphones. I was like, what the hell? Like, I figured, me too. I was like, I don't even have dogs. This is weird right now. <laughs> and I, I have to yell like that. So I'm sorry if you guys heard the, that yell that I do, but it's a certain yell, but I have to, to like let the, them know that I'm yeah. coming. That the alpha's there. Yeah, the the alpha. Part, the party's over there. I, <laughs> I had to throw I had to throw Koa out of the way and she's like fifty pounds and <laughs> and Odin is like on his back and she's like his face is messed up right now. But guys, before we go any further, let's talk about our prospect breakdown. If you guys have any, Reed, were you able to get anybody prepped for today or Hall? Um, give me give me one second. I, I I'll pull up one of them. Well, because I have one, and my, I just want to talk yeah. about him briefly. It's not gonna be like a full breakdown, but I wanted to see what you guys thought of him. Um, Emmanuel Forbes, the cornerback from Mississippi State, he's six foot, one hundred and eighty pounds. Had only twenty six tackles this season, with six interceptions though, and I think the tackles say more about him not being targeted in the passing game. When you watch the film, it's like really hard to be able to find what he's doing because it's not like we have the all 22 where we see the whole field. So unless the ball is going to him, it's really hard to follow what's going on. But for the most part, it doesn't go to him. And he's usually in very good coverage. But I will say for being 180 pounds, he's a very good tackler. Like he doesn't shy yeah. away from contact. Mm -hmm. He looks for it. He does form tackles. And that was very impressive for me because I was expecting him being at 180 not to be kind of a thumper or not a thumper but like be committed in that sort of sense if that makes sense but he very yeah. much is so and i was very uh i, I want to see more from him yeah oh yeah, yeah. I, I like emmanuel forbes i like his tape i think that uh he's probably more of a second rounder right now but that's perfectly fine with me man i i, I like emmanuel forbes a lot i think you kind of hit the nail on the head he's since he's super light i expected him to not really be a dog but then you watch him play and you're like okay this guy will get up to the line you know get in your face you know what i'm saying so this is my scouting report this little <laughs> fucking What's thing. up, James? It's like a gremlin. Can't even hear you. Do you but feel he, like taking a... off your diaper and throwing it again? Yeah. You want to do that? <laughs> you want to take off your diaper? <laughs> Please don't. All right. Let's get on to our fan questions, guys. And the first one I'm going to go to is the Colonel, who had a great one for us today. He submitted this in. A lot of chatter the, the past couple of uh, late on Chase Young. A couple podcast hosts believe the time to trade him is now. And named the San Diego Char LA Chargers as the most likely trade partner, teaming him back up with Joey Bosa from Ohio State. This seems to make sense given his injury history and Sweat's reliability. What, if anything, have you heard on this? I mean, I haven't really heard any chatter about trading him other than the people on Twitter talking about it and like the people on the podcast talking about it. I know, uh, and certain radio hosts talking about it. Um, I do know people are down on him just because, like, coming off – even, like, his rookie season, people had stuff to say about it. Like, oh, well, I mean, it wasn't, like, a crazy explosion of a rookie season. It was only seven and a half sacks. But people also forget that he got injured during – I think it was the Browns game or something like that. And it wasn't until the second half of the season that he even said himself he felt fully back to, like, almost 100% and, like, himself, which is why he went on that tear the second half of the season. So uh, I think that, <clears throat> obviously, the second year was – the first nine games weren't what you wanted to see, but um, I just think with Ryan Kerrigan being back, I think that Ryan Kerrigan in the room still like coaching Chase up now, obviously full-time coaching Chase up. I think that that's going to help Chase coming into this year. He's a year removed from the ACL, like another year. So he's not just rehabbing this off season. He's actually working out this off season. So I would just say in total, pump the brakes on the trade talks. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he does coming out this year. I think that, Obviously, this is going to probably be a make-or-break year for his career going forward to Washington. But if I had to bet some money on it, some poker chips on it, I'd probably put half my stack that he's going to come out and look like the Chase Young that we saw from the second half of his rookie year. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's hard for me to be able to like to speculate on this because for me, like if, looking at it like stocks, right? Like Chase Young's stock is not at a tradable asset right now. That would make you feel good exactly about it, right? Just because, not because he. <clears throat> hasn't been productive or shown what he can do more so just the fact that it's not what you know what it should be in essence if that makes sense and so that and for that reason it doesn't make sense to me whereas Montez Sweat who's coming off a great sack number year that makes sense because the team would be willing to give up more because it, it, it's more probability that he's going to be able to replicate that 
if that makes sense. It gives you a, more, a better data sheet to go off of. That, that makes more sense than Chase. Just because of what you'd be getting in assets in return, I feel like you should be trying to get as much as possible if you are going to go down that way. But I understand not wanting to kneecap your team. I, I, don't, I don't view it as likely, but I'll say I wouldn't be surprised just based on what we know is going to happen at some point based on when they have to make choices, right? It's inevitable. Yeah. Not everyone is going to get re-signed, and that's the unfortunate part. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it with the, like, you, you can't keep all four of them. More than likely, I mean, who knows? People are always pulling salary cap magic. But I still, you know, this is just kind of where you got to pull out your whole the whole dad thing where you just got to look at him and say, no. I said no. Okay, and that's all, that's all it is. And then you just move on. I said no. All right, that's it. Now, you'd know about that. You know about that. Now, I don't tell him no ever. Colonel. That's how I'm raising him. It's a new strategy I'm trying. I tell him yes to everything. Everything. I don't care. Whatever Good morning, football's latest mock draft has DJ mocking Dalton Kincaid, tight end from Utah, to us. What is the likelihood of that happening, Reed? Uh, I don't think it's very likely. And look, I like Dalton Kincaid a lot. I think that there's a three way tie for the top tight ends in this class. Actually, I personally, I think Kincaid and Musgrave are kind of, I think they're probably better than Mayer just in terms of what you would want for your offense with their pass catching ability, even though I think Mayer's probably better all around. But at 16, it's just. First round tight ends lately, and Kyle Pitts, rare exception, he's going to be fine. Uh, but I just no, I, I just I, I, you can get a good tight end a little bit later on in the draft. This is a good year too, um, and I just don't see. I, I still think that we have other needs that we could address before tight end. But hey, may, if they think that he's like the next Travis Kelsey, and I mean they they're going to use him like him, be enemy is, then really can't fault him for it. But we got other needs, I think. Yeah, so. I, I like I don't want to say that they're not going to draft a tight end because like they're in all likely like they they do this every year where we think the one position they're not going to re up on they do like last season it was defensive tackle mm, we mm, thought yeah. that they would probably go after defensive tackle but we didn't think it was going to be in the second round I mean I did you did I of course um, <laughs> which was proven to be correct and there was a good reason to do that and that's why I'm trying to think forward in this breath and saying that maybe that's the position this year to go in the second round so to speak. So in the first round, is it unlikely? <coughs> I don't know. Because the, that's because of the way that they built. I mean, today they signed Trent Scott, who is a former Steeler Panthers, had a P P PFF grade of a 70 with only like 30 snaps last year. But he's 29 years old. That's somebody that's coming in to give you some more depth on the offensive line just for competition, right? So like the way that they built a team, they don't have to go in any sort of direction. And we don't know where they scout these guys. Like we don't know what they're hearing with Dalton Kincaid. Is he worth the first, like the 16th overall? Right. And so that's the hard part for me, but I will say it is unlikely given the fact of just how that board is. And most likely it's going to be more towards the meat and potatoes kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I know this has been like a big discussion over the past couple of days ever since this mock draft came out, especially on Twitter. Grant and Danny were talking about it earlier. And like I get Grant's side of it where like rookie, like basically a rookie starting quarterback, you should be able to, you should want to get him all the weapons possible for him to succeed. Right. And obviously Kincaid is definitely going to be a weapon going forward. But I just think that at 16, the position value, even though, like you said, they've kind of positioned themselves where they don't really have to, kind of pigeon them pigeonhole themselves to a certain position and they really could almost kind of take like I'm not going to say a luxury pick but like one of those type of picks where it's like oh well like you said I didn't really see them bolstering that position but bam there it is but I just think that everyone's going off of the like obviously like we talk, I said this before that the Chiefs offense, yes, it did run through Travis Kelsey like the Alex Smith years and whatnot and before Tyreek Hill became Tyreek Hill but that's because he was the best like offensive weapon on the field at the time. So the offense is going to run through him. As soon as Tyreek Hill became Tyreek Hill, that offense kind of shifted to let's run it through Tyreek Hill because he was the best person on that offense on the field at that time. Right. As soon as Tyreek Hill leaves, what happens? Travis Kelsey becomes the best weapon on the field. We're going to run the offense through him again. So I just think that – Yes, Sam Howell would need all the weapons possible, but like you said, there's multiple tight ends in this draft. I feel like maybe second or third round, you could definitely get a tight end that's quality and could definitely uh, contribute to this team in 2024 But right away. But at the same time, like I said, I just think that the offense is multiple. And with Terry being the best weapon, or maybe it's Jahan one week, they can run the offense through different guys in different weeks and 
have success going forward. You you would like to think, obviously. But so I just think, yeah, oh no, oh no. Can K, yes, would would I be mad if they did it at 16? No, because this problem this team's points, this team's problem has been scoring points for a while now. Right. And he would definitely add to that. But I just think that there's other important positions as far as value, like cornerback or tackle or whatnot, something like that at 16. Now, if you trade back into the 20s and he's still there, then I could definitely see that as well. But I don't see him getting past Dallas because they just lost Dalton Dalton Schultz as well. I don't see how you can undervalue tight ends like Reed does. (laughs) Nobody values a good tight end more than me. Yeah, and I just wanted to say this. We had a question from Scott Hartley on Monday, and I kind of butchered it talking about the draft classes from 2022. And what we were supposed to do is we were supposed to look at all of them and combine them and say which were our most favorite of the past four and Uh, the least favorite. So if we want to rehash that real quick, I think we owe that respect to Scott Hartley. No. (laughs) Yeah, no, let me – give me a second. Pass. It was just no seventh rounders is what he was saying. Um, Right. So my Um, most favorite that I'll probably say for now at this point in time because we cannot say seventh rounders Oh man, that's that's a difficult one. Good job, Scott. Now that you yeah. have to like go back and go through it, it is kind of difficult in order to do this. Oh man. Yeah. Um. What I you... think I'm gonna go with this past year's draft class, just because you had so many guys. Well, not so many. You had Brian Robinson. Well, no, you got to pick one, one pick from the time, not the draft class, but one pick. Oh, from I thought you meant as a whole. No. Oh, this is a confusing question. Man. Oh wow. Um, okay. Well, don't get mad. Don't get mad at Scott. From I'm it... mad. <laughs> If, if it's favorite picks from all of them, uh, I mean, just like in terms of the value and stuff like that, then I I guess, I mean, I, just looking at them as of right now, either Derek Force or Benjamin St. Juice, and they both came from 2021. And that's, I mean, so that's that's huge, I guess, you know. That's huge. No, I huge. would agree with you there. Um, I do think Sam Cosme. A lot of great drafts. A lot of drafts. <laughs> you tried. You tried. I looked that's at okay. him. I looked at him. I said, wow, what a tremendous draft. Yeah, I tried, but James is fucking me up. Yeah, you know no, no, but the screwed up thing is I'm not allowed to pick a seventh rounder because Scott knows I'd pick Cam Curl. Like, <laughs> 10 out of 10 times, I'd be picking mm-hmm. Cam Curl. Uh, so that's the unfortunate part here. So I guess Derek Forrest or Benjamin St. Jude's. Uh, love the Canadian, man. <laughs> Especially if Don't you think it's team. funny the day after you said that you uh, hated Canadians but you love Benjamin St. Jude's, the report comes out that a new Canadian billionaire <laughs> is looking at the team. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I and I don't like that. That's not cool. I like my owners the way that I like my beer, baby. There's Just two American. things I can't stand in this world: and people domestic. who are intolerant of other people's cultures and the Dutch. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. I don't like the Dutch either. I don't like a lot of people. Kind of a xenophobe. Only Dutch I like are the masters. Didn't yeah. you know, Austin Powers is always only a Dutch good bit. I, I love to say. Yeah, only only Dutch I like are the rudders. You know what I'm saying? The double Dutch rudders. <laughs> oh my me god, and, me and the now, boys. Now, this one, this next question from Scott Harley. Each of you, who is your favorite camp story? What, who is your favorite camp story ever? An undrafted free agent or maybe a veteran player that you were rooting for and what happened to them? Mm. Man. That's a good one. That is a good one. I got to, like, think. Yeah. Uh, for so, me, it's Danny Johnson. Um, I saw hit what he showed on film in the Packers game in 2021, working in the box. I was very impressed with it. I thought that he deserved a chance to be on the 53 last season. Obviously did not make it, um, but then still that. comes waits around, is able to get back on the squad, and then is an asset on the outside, on the outside corner position, when in the, in the preseason, he, he everyone was making fun of him when he was out in the outside in preseason, saying he wasn't ready for it. And then in the regular season, you see him going out there strapping dudes up and doing a great job at it and being an asset. Yeah. So I think uh, Danny Johnson, I know Jeremy Reeves deserves um, – the acknowledgement, of course. I mean, yes. being the practice squad, go, trying to get job after job after job, staying here, sticking, working hard, and then saying that he wanted to be all pro and then ended up becoming all pro. Uh, it's just uh, th- that's always one you got to bring up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just to elaborate on on some of that, I mean, one of my favorite training camp players of all time who never ended up panning out was Taylor Jacobs. Taylor Jacobs was always so good during camp. You always read reports about him catching everything thrown his way and he was doing all this for years. And, you know, I mean, he wasn't an undrafted guy, but and then Taylor Jacobs didn't turn into anything. But you said camp story. So I'm just going to say my favorite training camp story of all time, not necessarily player, is uh, 
when Michael Westbrook beat the shit out of Stephen Davis. That story is <laughs> wild. That story is hilarious too. Yeah. But- yeah, it was. And I think the other one is when uh, the time that Jesse saw Bigfoot, obviously. That's my favorite. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, yes, that's my favorite tale. Yeah, for sure. Because we he's, don't know what happened. Still has <laughs> nightmares about it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was going to say Jeremy Reeves. You kind of already like said oh, everything my I was bad, dude. Say, so. and, dude, Jeremy Reeves is <laughs> so, yeah. insane, too. But one player that I went that I actually really liked back when he was the, when we were the Redskins was Mo Harris. I just felt like yeah, yeah, that was a dude that I was just like, just give him one chance. He can show what he can do. Yeah. Then he makes the catch against the Vikings. And then I was just like, yes, he's finally going to shine. And then he just like barely like you, never you did. You know what's funny about like, that yeah. one? I know exactly what player you're talking about. Because earlier that week I had asked John Kime, I said, you know, why isn't Mo Harris getting more reps on the outside? We need playmakers. He has sticky hands. And he replied back, well, there's more to it than just being able to catch the football. You got to block and do this other stuff. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I get that, but you, we need the playmaking, right? And then right. later, that, literally that weekend is when he caught that ball against the Vikings. Yeah. So I tweeted at John Kime. I was like, I know you remember my question. He was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I did. I remember. And then he was like, who are you? And Brandon- then he was, <laughs> Mo Harris was never seen again. Yeah. yeah. Brandon Banks was a cool ass story too. Being yeah. Brandon Banks was, was, oh, that was a good one. That was my guy, man. Yeah, I hated Banks. that. Every time he ran back a touchdown, like in a kickoff or a punt return, it was oh, a flag. <laughs> Literally every single time. Every single time. Yeah. yeah I think one of the best stories about Brandon Banks is the fact that somebody was talking about him, like standing in line at McDonald's. And they had no idea that he was standing behind them just because Brandon yeah. Banks looks like a normal dude, you know, very because yeah, he's like five, six. He, yeah. he also, bartended, <laughs> I think, at I think at Caddy's, one of those places in Bethesda, he did it as like a guest appearance or something. No, that was sick. I didn't go, but <laughs> sick, dude. Now, this next question from Scott Harley is, do you feel we've addressed O-line enough in free agency to warrant spending a first round pick on a tackle or guard? Um, I would say that you can never have too much O line depth, especially like you've seen over the past couple of years that we've been down to three, third, fourth, fifth string guys. And at the end of the day, when you get a first round pick, you get the fifth year option. You get five years of that guy before you got to pay him like the big, big, big multi year bucks. So the best asset would be to have a young stud, left tackle, right tackle, offensive lineman on a rookie contract for the next five years going forward before you really got to make a decision on what you're going to pay him. And yeah, I mean, it just obviously help the roster going forward. So I would say if they did it, I would definitely think that uh, it would be warranted. But if they went another direction, I wouldn't be like I said, they didn't pigeonhole themselves on a certain position. Yeah. And especially like you're always trying to get better. Right, Scott. And so um, one of one of the places that you can really invest into and get a lot of more production out of is the offensive line, you can say to an extent. And so I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with essentially throwing spaghetti noodles at the wall and seeing what sticks. And that's what kind of is going on with Trent Scott, you know, being a versatile piece, a tackle and a guard has been able to use in both those avenues. But he's also a veteran, 29 years old. It's not like he's horrible but it's somebody to come in and compete and that doesn't mean that limits you in any capacity of drafting somebody or signing somebody else just another body yeah and you know what that that's a good point too like if i think if they do go o-line they are probably going to take a guy who's versatile somebody like a broderick jones or a peter skaronsky or something because you look at the free agents that they've signed andrew wiley's played tackle and guard scott's played tackle and guard uh nick gates has played center and guard so Man, that's something that they're going that they need because when do you have the depth like Hall talked about? I mean, we were down to third, fourth stringers the last two years, so you, you got to get people in there. Uh, but so yeah, you're I'm saying also, they're looking for a position flex, which is a crazy. I know. Hear me out, though. Okay, I I know it sounds crazy, but I think that that's what they're going for. And yeah, I was makes right sense. About a lot makes of sense. Yeah. And now this next things. fan question is from Brant on Twitter. Do you think we should take an offensive tackle, guard, and center in this draft? Since O line is so deep, build this line for the future. Yeah. Um, just with the picks, I always, whenever I do one of those mock drafts, like the mock draft simulators, I always make sure, like, at least by the seventh round or so, the start of the seventh round, that I've, I've gotten at least a tackle, a guard, and a center. Even though I, I think center, <clears throat> it's tough now. I mean, just when you look at the roster, just having, having Larson, still having Rulier, having Gates, uh, that, that's a little crowded but i mean under the assumption if we're going to move on from rule then you're going to want to take a center a little bit earlier but yeah you definitely got to get i would like to beef up the entire one yes 
I think it all depends on who's there, right? And I think that's what what Ron in this front office has been able to do in this yeah. in free agency is to plug it up and up so you don't have to be hamstrung in this sort of sense. But I could also see them that if that's the way the board shapes out, then yeah, that's what you go for. But in in essence, you're not forced to do this. Um, and I think that you should be much more balanced in the way that you struct your draft uh, your draft classes in a sense because you do have other holes. There's other areas where you do need some help and depth, and you have to be able to find the best talent in order to supplement your team in the right piece based on what is left for you. you got to be able to project where guys are going to go. Sometimes you're going to be wrong, but you have to be able to structure your draft class in a way that it's not going to destroy you by the end of the draft where you're saying, I have to take a tackle here in the seventh round, and you're just wasting a pick. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, I mean – yeah, I think it's just going to determine, like, position value and how the board shakes out. But, I mean, I do definitely think they're going to tread take at least two of those positions, whether it's tackle center or a tackle that turns into a guard and another tackle. Some type of combination, they're going to try to fill at least two of those positions through the draft. And, again, they like versatile, like, position flex type of players. So it wouldn't surprise me that a lot of the linemen that they take – are going to be guys that could play either guard or tackle or this like guard or center or something like that. Wait a minute. Are you saying that they're looking for positional flex? I've heard that word thrown around a couple of times. So I think so. Are you sure about that? That's insane. I'll Did check my sources. Know- I'll check my sources and get back. Did you guys know Logan Thomas used to play tight end? I, I, I used to play quarterback. That's not <laughs> stupid. Now let's get to our discord chat server for our next question from Tim Towner. Do we have any math changers on our team? A math changer is a player who forces the opposition to alter their play to compensate for their skills, like a wide receiver who has to be doubled or a shut-down cornerback, or an edge that always has to get chipped, or a quarterback with a strong and accurate arm to all three levels of the field. He's not sure that we do. That's a, that's a fair, I think, um, to, to say that you don't think that we do because, I mean, yeah, uh, the only the person the closest would be Terry, obviously, because you look at his route running. He, he runs a four three, uh, but he's he's we haven't gotten to see Terry to his full potential yet because we haven't seen him with a legit quarterback. So it's tough to say at this point. Yeah, I don't know. That's hard. Um, I'll say we have two of them. Um, I'll say that we have and they're both on a defensive line in Jerome Payne and Jonathan Allen. Um, because generally what happens is the offensive lines are having to play one on one of them. <laughs> And usually that guy is paying dividends. And so that's why these teams are doing a lot of quick stuff because they can't contain what is coming at them. So, I, uh, Tim, I know you probably are going to poke holes through it, but I genuinely believe that if Deron Payne was by himself, any offense would be saying we have to make sure that we're dedicating another guy to him so he doesn't isn't able to get after us in pass rush or get after in the run game. Uh, same thing with Jonathan Allen on the other side. And I think that they that's why they are so good together because you cannot take out both of them at the same time. It's, it, they, had, they did that last season, unfortunately, and it was like they literally dedicated four offensive linemen just to them two. And it actually was a big run play, crazy enough. Yeah, um, I would say that if Deron Payne can match or exceed what he did this past season coming off of the, the contract year, I would put him as a, a math changer just because he's going to be a guy that's going to be put in that top five, talked about D tackles wise, going to command a double team every time, going to go into the week where the offense is like going to circle him and say, hey, we got to make sure this guy doesn't disrupt us up the middle, especially with nowadays where the quick game is just involved in the game. And that interior pressure is becoming more and more important. I think that uh, Deron Payne could, and obviously Jonathan Allen, I would say. I would say Jonathan, Allen's, Jonathan Allen has proved over the past couple of years that he is that guy and can be that guy. But like I said, I think that uh, the second guy would be Deron Payne if he can play and match what he did this past season. Yeah, and I just want to say it was really funny in our Discord chat server. Uh, Jeff Miles I wrote in there and said he had a dream last night that we signed Bobby Wagner in free agency and we dr- and Christian Gonzalez fell to us at 16. So let's yeah. make that dream into a reality, right. baby. That sounds like a wet dream to me. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. He woke yeah, up with a, a hole in his mattress. On, guys. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Jeff is this funny. Is he gets show, us. Guys. That's why he's in the Discord. Sorry, I, I thought no, that was, uh, no, I was channeling my inner Fido. There's nothing funny about that, guys. 
So, Sorry. Jeff, that was good. That's funny. I we like have to respect <laughs> Reed's wishes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now this next this next question. I don't want to get offended. I have to post something on Twitter telling people to not do that. So yeah, I get it. Uh, if they this is from Tim Towner. If they decide to trade Montez or Chase Young before the twenty three draft, like now, what would you say would be proper compensation? What do you think they would get, or what would they be offered? Sorry. I think Chase Young would be maybe like a a third or fourth or lower just because, yeah, like you said earlier, Kyle, the stock on him is kind of low right now coming off the injury. People don't really know. He was called generational. Now people are kind of like, I think more, more people here are iffy on him. I don't know like the national perception of him right now, but I would say that a lot of the fan base and the, uh, the, the, the radio people, the DC media people are kind of iffy on what he's going to be going forward. So I would say maybe a third or below for Chase, maybe like a third to fifth for Chase. Montez, you could probably get a second, an early second for him. I'm not going to go say the first because he hasn't had that like game changing, like high level top tier pass rusher season yet. He's just been like, like a B, A minus type level at his best. So I would say he's like a, a second round pick for uh, Montez. And the only thing with Montez is I, I think that Montez, um, his availability has shown to be an asset. And maybe that is something because somebody sees his length and is showing the pass rushing skills are all coming together at the same time. Preston so Smith. That happened with Preston Smith. He went to Green Bay and all of a sudden he blew up. And the, yeah. the only time that Montez has really missed time was after the death of his brother, um, obviously. Right. Or no, no, it was his jaw. So nah, he, yeah, was I was going to say he broke his jaw, but yeah, and then the – but either way, they were well, my bad. They were connected. I was mistaken. My fault. Um, now, this next question from Tim Towner. Uh, or no, my, you, I answered it. Did you answer it, Reed? No, but you, I mean, I was just going to say what you guys were going to say. Montez okay. probably a second. Chase now, this next question from Tim is fantastic, dude. Would you be opposed to the NFL applying a lottery to the annual draft like the NBA and MLB to keep teams from tanking and allow a quicker path to turn a franchise around? Look, I get the lottery thing. I do. And I completely understand it. I mean, I think baseball's new rules for it are stupid. I mean, like the Nats can't pick above a certain place, even if they're the worst team after getting a high pick. It's just, it's all weird. But, but I just don't, I no. I just think that the worst teams should be able to get the worst picks. And I understand tanking, taking sucks and, and you do want to prevent it. And the lottery is a good way to do so. NBA kind of ruined that entire thing for me though, man. I mean, you, NBA, there's no chance in hell the NBA is not fixing that lottery some years when a big prospect comes out. You know that they are. It happened yep. with Patrick Ewing. It happened with LeBron. It happened with Kyrie. Yep. It happened, it happened with, with Cleveland. Sports. Exactly. They it happened were, with Cleveland yeah. as soon as LeBron left. They're yep. like, oh, here you go. Two first round picks back to back. Like it's just <laughs> a lot. And it's, it's, so that shit gets frustrating. So I'm going to say no, just because it's frustrating. Cause, we, you know, sometimes when you suck, you just, you want that player. You know? Yeah. And, and for starters, let me just put this like Jerry Jones got nominated to the NFL Hall of Fame. The last thing I want is Jerry Jones having the ability to be in the lottery system because I know exactly how that's going to come about. You know what I'm saying? If you're picking up what I'm putting down. I love the idea of it, but the one thing I will say, the NFL does a very good job of structuring the way that they're built in order that it's constant competition because the bad teams are getting those high-value draft picks, and so you constantly have these teams switching, moving, and and it, it makes it very competitive. It makes it very tumultuous, I guess you could say. It makes it chaotic, and I like that. That's the way it should be, in a sense. So I, I don't want to add the lottery system in to allow the ability of corruption. Let's just keep it with what your what your thing is, and if you are tanking, then you're you're gone. Hey, Bengals probably would have yeah. never gotten Burrow if that was the case, you know. Exactly. And they would have never dug them out of this. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I wouldn't be for the tanking system either just because not even just the corruption side of it, just the part of what makes the NFL so great is be, is that every year there's a team that goes from worst to first. And then that's usually possible due to having that first overall pick or that second overall pick because you were so bad the year before. Right. And when it comes to tanking in the NFL – that's not even really a thing at the end of the day. Like everyone's out there getting paid, first of all. And second of all, like, it's kind of like you can't take a playoff in the NFL because that's usually how you get injured. So it's not like, not and at the end of the, also, you can't even put bad tape out there showing that ex- you're not. Exactly. Exactly. You're all, you're always auditioning for the next, the next year and the year after that and the year down the line, you're auditioning for the other 31 teams, basically year after unless you're like an established, like solid player. 
And to tank, you got to literally be like a Houston Texans team where it's like a bunch of young rookies, a bunch of like, like if you want to put a grade on them, a bunch of like 60s and 70s and below type players. Like you're not going to – like most NFL teams have – average to above average talent on their team so it's kind of hard to tank unless you just have one of those crazy injury plague type ridiculous seasons so yeah i like i just think that like i said worst to first or first yeah worst to first is what in the drama and all like the that goes into the nfl and whatnot i think that's what makes nfl so great so i wouldn't want to change it up with a lottery yeah, i got you i'm with you now this next question from tony franchise in the discord chat are there any surprise free agent signings you could see us getting no one is talking about? Mm. Uh, I'd say I know John Kime and uh, Mark Tyler, huh, your guy, Breed. But we're talking like, about. <laughs> that's your guy. That's your boy. Oh, yeah. Great guy. Now. They were talking yeah, about. The one uh, who hasn't blocked yet, Hall. So. And, <laughs> yeah, no, right. They were talking about Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Special, special privileges. Um. They were talking about Drew Tran- Drew Tranquil from the San Diego. Damn, are you Los- serious? You really? Gr- Damn, that's what I was gonna say. Good yeah, job. from the Los Angeles Chargers. And then if they did, if they would have got Anthony Walker, then then I would probably put that to the side. But I know they want to add another veteran linebacker, get some more depth in that room. And I know they had talks with him before that, or they were thinking about it, or I, th- I forget what John Kahn exactly said. But long story short, I think that Drew Drew Tranquil might be on their radar. Yeah, because what John John Kime had said that they were far apart in money, and so they had kind of like walked away from Drew Tranquil. And I don't think he has signed yet, so maybe that's still up in the air. And Drew Tranquil, he's kind of almost been injured a little bit, but he's been with the Chargers and highly productive, very high in tackles. And so to replace Cole Holcomb, I feel like that is somebody you could bring in that you would feel. And honestly, if you brought Drew Tranquil in here, you would feel very good about the linebacker room, just like you did if you would have brought Anthony Walker in here. You feel a lot really good about the depth of that room. And so if I was going to pick anybody, I probably would go down that route. Um, maybe like a Mike Jacecki or did Jacecki sign with someone? Yeah. Patriots. Patriots. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. You don't have anybody else? No, I was going to go with Tranquil too, because I heard, I saw the post Are you serious? a few days ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will say Ronald Darby's out there. He did play well for us in the, in this system a couple of years yeah. back on a one year deal. So Maybe he wants to show like another prove it deal. Maybe he comes here for the cheap one, one year deal. Hmm, that's a very, very good William one. William Jackson the third. Oh, he's he's out there. Yeah, Yo, we got to scoop him up. He's a baller. Yeah, great you know that said happened. nobody ever. Yeah. Um, maybe Jarek McKinnon so. is a good one, Tony. I'll try to figure true. out. Yeah, there you go. There you go. True. True. Like, I know that people I've have been heard. talking about running back, and I did my we film breakdown. Yeah. Uh, film breakdown. B. J. N. Robinson yesterday, and my goodness, I mean, <laughs> dude, there's some plays where that Texas offensive line is just literally paving a truck mm-hmm. road for him to run mm-hmm. through. Right. But there's other times when you just see it that that kid is special, man. The dude, vision, I... the speed, the lateral quickness—it's it, all there. I'm gonna be so it's... salty when Philly dress him. I know, right? Just uh, to touch the. I mean, I know he's not coming out this year, probably. Honestly, he needs way more time than even coming out next year. But I do not get the Quinn Ewers hype, dude. I get his high school stuff at camps was cool as shit. And, like, he, the dude has unreal talent. But he is not that dude. He's not that good. It's only because he had a mullet. So people thought yeah. he was tight. Is that the he was, quarterback he was, for Texas? Yeah. He was rated like a, a he was rated like the, a perfect recruit. Him and Vince Young. He was, like, the one that was getting offered, like, NIL money in high school. Like, basically, yeah. like, they were like, yo, like, we know you're about to come out of high school. He was getting offered, like, a million dollars in high school yeah. for, like, it's, NIL money. Yeah. yeah when watching not, the film, I, was, I wasn't I was overly impressed with it, the quarterback yeah, play from what Neither I was Neither is watching. Texas. But, hey, yeah, sir, because don't they have uh, the Manning? boy the yeah, arches he's exactly going there this year. Yeah, yeah dude he, he won that job already yeah. <laughs> he won that exactly. as soon as he said i'm going there <laughs> yeah exactly I he mean, wouldn't be you... signing there unless he thought he could get the job so right you're absolutely right now this last question from tim towner so we barely have enough cap for the draft and it seems that ron rivera is itching to add a free a- add free agent help see hacksaw ridge such desmond doss just one more so if we have no money and if and we want to sign free agents well, somebody's got to go. Who's the first guy you think of if you got to release someone? That's a good question. 
there's always that one player every year that everyone gets surprised, like AP that one year. More, Morgan uh, Moses, the Morgan year. Moses, you know, yeah, Morgan Moses and Eric Flowers. Right. Oh man, that was a tough one. Uh, I know the easy one is Logan Thomas, just because of the cap number and the production don't match. But I don't want to do that because that's too easy, and I like Logan Thomas. Um, my car. <laughs> yeah, what kind of car? Does car. It? So, what kind of car do I drive? Golf. So As basically, the backstory golf. to that, if that you guys so don't cool. know what that is, we interviewed Logan. We were eight. We were lucky enough, blessed enough to interview Logan Thomas awesome at the, dude. Yeah, at the draft last season. And I, he, we were talking about golfing, and so I asked him like how much he, how far he drove. You, you go, what do like, you drive? Yeah, what do you? Uh, drive? Yeah. Basically saying, what do you do yeah, on the yeah. with your driver? How far do you hit your driver? Yeah. And he responded, it "Was like my car." So it was just really funny. <laughs> it was just an inside joke between. Us. Very funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess if he doesn't restructure and he's not healthy enough, I'd say Chase Rouye is another kind of like easy one that's always floated out there, but. Those are the main two I can think of off the top of my head. I, it, yeah. I, be, I don't want no disrespect. I don't ever want to be caught doing this, and I don't mean to be doing it. But we're talking about one surprise guy, right? That we're not that nobody really would expect, right? Um, and I'll, I'm not going to say he's the first guy I think of. But I'm going to come up with a surprise one because I think the first Terry one McLaurin. you think of is pretty easy, and I don't want to do that. He's already been talked about enough. Terry McLaurin. <laughs> I don't need to pile on more. But I'll say um Kendall Fuller. Uh, just because maybe yeah. let's just say somebody like Christian Gonzalez falls to them or whatever. And because Kendall does have a high cap number, no disrespect to Kendall. I love Kendall VT boy. It's just like, that could be one surprise that they yeah. do because they know that they have the slot and he, because he's expensive. Yeah. Like, and then also, I mean, just following that logic too, which is what I was going to do is uh, Charles Leno. Uh, just maybe they see an offensive tackle and they're in the draft and they're like, we're getting this dude and uh, we're going to, play him and left tackle and we're going to save a little bit of money do whatever Charles Leno you got demolished by a rookie last year for the Giants multiple times and uh you know what you're gone but I like Charles I think nice guy great guy never met him great guy yeah <laughs> yeah and I'm really sorry about earlier guys during that Larson um interview dude it, like if you guys could really hear the sounds that were coming through like it just it gives me anxiety just because all we the, heard was was the dogs. We didn't hear anything after. We didn't hear you scream or anything. So you didn't. Oh, okay. We didn't. You didn't hear that. me say I gotta go. No. Well, well yeah. Well, no, no, we, we heard, heard that. that. We, heard, we heard the dogs. Go. You know, I gotta go. And you just jetted. And I, was, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. Like we didn't hear Katie like screaming your name. I was like, no, oh, you didn't. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, Kyle, she, stop. It was like it was like I heard. The pan- <laughs> I, I heard like. I'm the sorry, panic. please. I heard like the panic in her voice, and which like terrifies me because that means like the first thing because my head is one of the kids is, gonna, is involved in the middle yeah. of it, you know. And that, that's terrifying. what, I, dude. I was just like as a parent, I was worried that you were gonna come downstairs and be like, "We gotta cut it off," because I was like, "Oh no, I hope cash or something's good." Because you know, <clears throat> you automatically hear that, and you're like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, Kyle stormed out of here. Let's it's really sure. weird because those two <laughs> dogs are so dang close, and like they fought, they they get into these random fights that are just so stupid. They don't. They're really Deron do Payne and Jonathan Allen. Yeah, I mean seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're me and Mark Tyler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did the other dog call uh, one of them a raging dickhead or something? That's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other dog blocked him and started talking shit. <laughs> Pussy. I'm just, no. You're a nice guy. Dude. Man, uh, seriously. And uh, I'm sorry to Magic Johnson as well because that was uh <laughs> I was I, I had anxiety. I had anxiety after literally that was a great episode. And literally know, the last two I minutes know. I had anxiety. I'm like, am I gonna have to delete this? So did I. So did I. I, I was like, you texted me about it. It's not that bad. Yeah. And I went back and watched it, and I was like, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe just trim the fat. Maybe just get that out of there. <laughs> so I can't do that, man. Oh man. The good thing but, is that I can't get I can't get canceled for anything because like I don't have a career. You know. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst that's going to happen? <laughs> You'll get blocked by Mark Tyler. Um, some would say that's the best oh, thing that could happen. No. That's true. That's a good point. Block features are very, very uh, important, right? The funny yeah. thing was, dude said he was like, my timeline is so much better now. Like, dude, when did you see Reed tweet? He never tweets. Yeah. He never tweets. <laughs> what are you Time talking about? Like you're just your comment section's better because I'm not mocking you and putting right. a capitalized word every fucking five words. Right. <laughs> Uh, but one thing I, was, I just want to say, I wanted to say thank you to Tyler for joining us uh, because I felt like he was very open and honest about um, everything that was going on. And I did appreciate his comments. And I'm glad that he was he worked his butt off to come back here because I do feel like those are the type of people that deserve 
the chance to come back and, and work. And because he did that last season, you know, he, he talked about how his nickname was Milestone Tyler because he was meeting all of his milestones in rehab trying to get back. And it was crazy, the timing, because it was like he was working so hard to get back and we needed him when he came back, you know, cause chase was injured. We kind of, we didn't have, um, Keith Ishmael. He was gone. Nick Martin wasn't doing all that well. So it was like, he worked himself back to the point where he was able to get us back into the season. So a lot of, a lot of thanks to Tyler Larson. I'm really happy to hear that he had a great time last season. Cause so yeah. did we, yeah, especially yeah. like two years ago when he filled in the first time he, he played well. And like, yep. we were like, we feel, at least we feel comfortable with him in there. And last year he came and he did the same thing again. And we we're like, hell yeah. And then he got hurt and it was like, Oh shit. And he was, he was a free agent, and we're like, man, I hope that he's – the fact right. that he signed and he wanted to stay here is huge. I think that's awesome. Yep. I was just going to say I like the fact that he said that uh, – because I was going to – that was going to be one of my questions as we were like – as I was thinking about it. Like, did you have any other offers on the table or was it just like I want to come back here and nothing else? So I like that he was like, no, nah, I just wanted to be here nowhere else. Like, so just kind of goes against that narrative that no one ever wants to come to Washington or stay in Washington. Right. Absolutely right. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap us up for this episode. Reed, do you want to apologize? Um, I'd like to, yeah, to, I mean, to people on Twitter that were like, you know, you never call somebody names, guys. That's not cool. Like, do you guys, yeah, I get it. But to Mark, I, <laughs> Mark. I don't care about Mark. He's Bama. I'm so happy that negative ass motherfuckers off my timeline. <laughs> okay, that was a great apology. It was very sincere. I felt, I felt the genuineness, the kindness coming out of your voice there. Uh, but uh, Reed, I will say that you know, you know, you'll learn from it, obviously, and you should be yeah. doing all that stuff. But I will say that you were vindicated. No, you were vindicated for your comments by the behavior post. Okay, so I will say that. Well, hey, thank you. No, I'm just kidding. I, yeah, you never do that, you know. But sometimes, you know. Yeah, just... I got you, and I'm sorry about that. Yeah. I shouldn't have mocked him, I guess. You did apologize <laughs> to him right after you called him names, though. Let's be perfectly honest here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was followed up by, like, another, like, this. <laughs> yeah, but... another insult. But to be fair, though, if somebody called me <laughs> but... a raging dickhead, I would just be like, no, yeah, I know, you're probably right. If somebody called me, like, a piece of shit or something, I'd be like, yeah, no, that's me. But, like, <laughs> fucking say it to a 50-year-old, all of a sudden he's all butthurt, and he's like, that is not acceptable. It's like, are you? Uh, <laughs> did you just get on the internet for the first time, dude? Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Chill. I don't know. He's a nice guy, though, I guess. <laughs> That's why I love you, man. That's why I love you. It's just, um, let's be smarter next time. All right, everybody. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you guys again on Monday. I really appreciate if you made it this far. We love you. You're a true, true supporter of the team and us, and we really do appreciate you guys. All right, I'm Kyle. Shout out to my Wi-Fi because my, Ooh, my yeah. uh, stream That's hasn't frozen in, like, so long. Yeah. Yeah, so shout out to Verizon. You, I think I have Verizon. That's what happens when you pay your bills, dog. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's so messed up, Reed. All right, everybody. Nah, I, don't right. Mine. I don't pay mine. Yeah. All right, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you on Monday. Have a great, safe weekend. We, re- we love you guys. Have a good one. Washington football. Woo! Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kyle. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. And if you liked what you saw, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you get notified when anything new is uploaded to the channel. Also, we just launched theburgundyzone.com. You can go there and find all of our latest news, articles, and the latest episodes that are uploaded. Again, we also have the Discord chat server where all of our VIP folks are in, like Andy Burroughs, Scott Hartley, Sergio Martin is in there as well. Don't miss out on the Discord chat server. Go and check that out. Until next time, everybody, watching the football. Hey!